بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم والعاقبة للمتقين أما بعد Respected brothers and sisters, today with Alhamdulillah we had completed the 13th juz And in this juz we had completed Surah Yusuf We also wrote, read or recited the entirety of Surah Ra'd And we had also completed Surah Ibrahim Before I actually continue from where we left off yesterday uh, Surah Ra'd is a surah that would encourage every single one of us to read Hopefully by tonight it's not a very lengthy read, uh, but if you were to pick up an English translation or an Urdu translation or whatever translation you're comfortable with, uh, that particular surah does not need a tremendous amount of explanation. And it's a brilliant surah to try and get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's something I want to encourage all of us to do. Is, I think about it. If we're asked right now to give a talk on Allah, <laughs> After the three minute mark, all of us go silent. There's like not much we can say, but talk about your favorite cricket team. Right? Talk about the, I don't know, whatever, whoever you're rooting for tomorrow or the day after in the finals. Okay, whether it's Argentina or Germany. Okay, uh, talk about Messi or when, any of these people. It can go on for hours and hours. Okay, Fadali Argentina. Okay, or for Lali Germany, we, just, we can just go on and have debates and, you know, go into stats and, you know, after looking, you know, we look at our watch and three minutes later we look at it, three hours have gone by. Okay, that's how in tune we are with the creation. It's time we become in tune with the Creator, my dear respected brothers and sisters. When are we going to get in tune with reality? So this is one surah I'm going to recommend. Every single one of us reads tonight, inshallah. There's plenty of time between now and uh, suhoor And most of the time we don't even go to sleep Because of the lack of time to sleep So read this insha'Allah And get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Carrying on from uh, yesterday We were talking about the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam And we can see a, a, the story of an individual Who has faced rejection Who has uh, faced repeated adversity and if there's anyone that needs to complain about life, it would be him. But instead of complaining, he is still well connected and well appreciative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we reached a point that finally Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam has reached the end of the tunnel. You know when they say there's light at the end of the tunnel? So now he's reached the end of the tunnel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after testing Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam by making him go in the lowest of places, in the dungeons of Egypt. And keep in mind, Egypt was a very powerful civilization. It's a civilization that we still read about today. Okay, we still study, we talk about the pharaohs and uh, you know, the whole history about the pyramids and uh, the Valley of Kings and all that stuff. We study this in school. I mean, hundreds of thousands of years later, I don't even know what the timelines are. But thousands and thousands of years later, we're still studying this stuff because of the impact that community had on society. It really had an impact in history. Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam is now in this region. He's in this society. And he's finally been released. His innocence has been declared. It's been publicized. Okay, when it comes to the person that was accusing him of foul play, she had openly said, I tried to seduce him. He's telling the truth. <coughs> Nothing ever happened. He never did anything against me. I'm the one that was doing things against him. Openly, publicly, she declares it. Finally, the king, he gives Yusuf والسلام, the position of the very person who used to take care of Yusuf. Okay, the minister of food and agriculture, Yusuf والسلام, gets that position. Because at this time, look at what the things he was doing. He was learning. Every opportunity he got, he was enhancing himself. He was, he was improving himself. Now, staying in the home of that minister, he learned pretty much everything there needs to be learned about the entire land, where the storehouses are, how you go about rationing food if you need to ration food, how you go about... Uh, distributing food supplies and so forth. He learned all of this. 
And now he's telling the king that, listen, if there's anyone that is trustworthy and that can protect these storehouses, it's me. I can do this job because we have seven good years which are going to be followed up with seven really tough years. And he gets the job. Okay, so Yusuf has gone from rejection all the way to being one of the most influential and powerful people in the land. And not his homeland, in the land that was pretty much the superpower of that time. The land that everyone looked up to. When I was saying yesterday that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He doesn't just compensate people for their patience in the hereafter, He also compensates them in this world. Well, here is proof of that. Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, he has gotten a position, number one, he's an outsider, he's not even Egyptian, he's not even Coptic. Okay, that's something that's not very common in Egyptian society, where you have an outsider that's now going to be put in a position of power. And number two, Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, he is now basically responsible for the fate, if you can say, of the entire Egyptian community. Because it's really, he's got the job to try and get these seven years right. Store up enough food and enough supplies that the following seven years, you know, the community is not going to have to suffer in them. So Yusuf والسلام, has been given this tremendous task which is coming with tremendous respect, tremendous honor, tremendous nobility. He is now in a position of authority. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him when he was now in the, in the depths of darkness, not spiritual darkness, but we're talking about darkness in terms of worldly terms. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him authority and now he's going to be tested. And lo and behold, the seven years pass, arrangements have been made, now the next seven years of drought have begun. Not only are the people of Egypt coming for food rations, which they have to pay for, people from surrounding lands are also coming, from Palestine, and one of the people, or one of the families that come is his own family. Now, the brothers of Yusuf, والسلام, there is no way that they can ever imagine that that brother that we threw down the well is going to be in a position of authority today. There's no way they could imagine that. They come, it's their turn to try and get their rations, they have to pay for the food. They're in front of Yusuf they don't know him. Okay, فَعَرَفَهُمْ وَهُمْ لَهُ مُنْكِرُونَ He knew who these people are, these are my brothers. They had no clue that this is Yusuf It's been so many years. Okay, they have no clue. Think about this. This is a big test now. Yusuf has got the upper hand now. If he wants, he can throw them in the dungeons. You know, find a bunch of crocodiles in the moat and then feed them to the crocodiles. And there's plenty of crocodiles in the Nile. He can do anything he wants with these people. Hey, take his revenge. But instead, what does he do? He speaks to them in a kind way. He asks about his full brother, Binyamin. You're not asking, oh, you, have, you must have another brother or so, and they reveal, yeah. Because all of these brothers are his half-brothers. Bin Yamin, who is younger than Yusuf is his full brother. So he tells them, you know, next time you come for these rations, and definitely they're going to have to come, uh, just make sure you bring him. And if you don't, then you know, I'm going to have to excuse myself from giving you any rations. And what does he do? He doesn't even take money from them. He gives them food for free. These are the people that wanted to kill him and he's now feeding them for free and he's being gracious to them. He's being kind to them. This, uh, and don't tell me Yusuf والسلام, didn't have human sentiments. He is a human just like all of us. Okay, but the thing is that he had shown excellence in his human character. And that's the level that we want to get to. That as bad as we have been abused, I know for a fact none of us have been abused as bad as Yusuf والسلام, so let's adopt the noble character of Yusuf والسلام, when it comes to family and friends. They go back to their father, they ask that Binyamin be sent with them, the father is reluctant, finally he takes an oath and he sends them off. Yusuf والسلام, 
when these brothers come to him, he privately introduces himself to Bin Yamin, and then he sets him up, he frames him with theft so that he can keep him back, and that, that plot is successful. The brothers are really now worried, what are we going to do? We, know, we lost one brother, now we've be, promised our father, Yaqub to bring this one back, and if he doesn't go back, we're going to be in big trouble. So the eldest one, he also stays back, he goes, I'm not going to go home. I'm sticking around here. Okay, so eventually the other brothers, they make it home and they tell their father, well, this is what happened. If you don't believe us, ask the caravan that was in front of us. Ask them if, you know, the story we're telling you about Binyamin stealing something is true or not. Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam, again, he decides to exercise patience. فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ عَسَ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَأْتِيَنِي بِهِمْ جَمِيعًا Allah will bring them all back to me. Okay, it's very possible, it's very, uh, it's, it's more than likely that Allah will bring them back. And indirectly, he's already told them, told them, he's alluded to the fact, I didn't believe your story about Yusuf alayhi I know he's alive somewhere. Okay, he's not dead, no wolf ate him up. He's alive somewhere. Finally, what happens, the grief, and you can say the, uh, the memories of Yusuf alayhi they come back to Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam. And he now is expressing his sorrow over the loss of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam to the extent that he's become blind. عينahu, due to excessive crying. He's crying, he's weeping all this time and now he's become blind as a result. And the family begins to admonish him. But the thing about Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam, and here's a lesson for all of us, that when we are going through hard times, we don't need to go and advertise to the entire world. Oh, this is what's happening with me. Life is so tough. Life is just not worth it. You know what? I don't even know why I'm even alive. I just want to kick the bucket now. Okay? We don't need to go and tell the whole world about how tough life is. You, Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam, when he's being admonished by his family members for remembering Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, he, goes, he makes one thing very clear. Listen. إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ when it comes to the pain and the sorrow and the grief that I am experiencing, I am now referring that to Allah. I will talk to Allah about it. I'm not going to you people. Okay? إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ And that's the way we do it as well as Muslims. That when we are going through hard times, and we will go through hard times, that's just one of Allah's promises. Don't think life is always going to be sweet. There are going to be challenges in life. That's Allah's promise. But whenever those challenges come, we don't just you know, start complaining, Ya Allah, what are you doing with me? I, I pray my salah, I go for Jumu'ah, I give my zakah, I give sadaqah, and this is what's happening with me? I don't understand. I need an appointment with the imam. Okay? <laughs> so imam, look, what's, what's with this? I don't understand this religion thing. You know, I do everything right, and now everything wrong is happening with me. I remember one of my ustads, he was talking about some of his relatives uh, in one day in a, in a lesson of Sahih Muslim. He was talking about how they've just become a bit religiously inclined and now they're going in Jamaat and they're inviting people uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some family members are you know, not very receptive of this change and they've become somewhat hostile. And they came to my ustad and they start complaining to him that, you know, we thought life would be better after doing this but actually it's uh, it's not gotten better it's actually gotten somewhat challenging so my ustad turns around to them and he says when things become according to you normal and better then come and see me because then you have a problem basically the closer we get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the bigger challenges he throws our way because this in reality is a mercy in disguise the moment we embrace those challenges with patience, what's coming our way? Unlimited compensation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unlimited. إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ So in reality, it's a mercy in disguise. And as they say, no pain, no gain. And that's what's really happening. So Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam, he's turning to Allah and talking to Allah about his pain. Remember, Allah was real for them. Allah was not a concept. Allah wasn't a God that we know at the back of our mind. Allah was so real for them that they would have 
proper conversations with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just like we would have conversations amongst ourselves. And that's the level that we want to reach. That's the, a that's the connection we want to form with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finally, cutting a long story short, the brothers go back to, to uh, Yusuf alayhi salatu for, for, for more food rations. They don't have sufficient funds. Yusuf alayhi salatu then decides to re- reveal himself. And uh, they're shocked. Basically, he says, he tells them, uh, I mean, do you remember, do you recall, uh, do you know what you did with Yusuf والسلام, and his brother when you people were ignorant? And they're thinking to themselves, wait a second, how does this guy know Yusuf? There is no way that this individual knows what we did in that forest where we threw that brother of ours down the well and then sold him off to slavery. There's no way that this guy could know if there is any way that this person would know, it would be it would because, or it would be for the very reason that he's the individual we did this with. And they asked him, Ainnaka anta Yusuf, are you Yusuf? And he says, Yes, Ana Yusuf wahada akhi. I'm Yusuf, and this is my brother, bin Yamin. alayna. And then he teaches him a lesson right there. Allah has given us a favor over others alayna. Allah has favored us and remember one thing immediately is giving them a lesson that those people who exercise Allah consciousness and they're patient Allah will never waste the reward of those people who do good and that applies to us as well we adopt Allah consciousness, especially in this blessed month of Ramadan, and we try and excel in it, and when the challenges come our way, we are patient. Allah will reward us in this world and the world hereafter, and the proof of that is the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Look how he was rewarded. Okay, he is a man of authority, and at the same time, he's a person of dignity and honor. When they wanted to strip him of honor, Allah gave him more honor. Because at the time when they were trying to strip him of it, he was patient. So it's only a struggle for the short term, but in the long term, it's nothing but bliss. Finally, Yusuf calls the whole family over and that dream that he had as a child, where he saw the 11 stars and the sun and the moon bowing down to him, that's exactly what happens. The 11 stars representing his brother, brothers, and the star and the moon representing his parents. And in those days, bowing down to a king was permissible. It was basically, when they would do a prostration, it was a prostration of respect, not a prostration of worship. It wasn't a ritual prostration. It was more of a way of uh, expressing respect. And that was permissible in those days. It's not permissible in our ummah. Now, I want to close off with this. Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, this is just, this for me, it, it really, uh, I don't know, I get emotional when I think, read this part. Because Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, he's the great grandson of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, as we pointed out yesterday. So he's a prophet himself. He's the son of a prophet who's the son of a prophet. Okay, he is probably one of the most closest people to Allah on the planet. Okay, he's one of the most closest people to Allah on the planet. I mean, who can be more closer to Allah than a prophet? Think about it. No wali, no saint, no sheikh, no peer, no nothing can come close to the status, the spiritual status of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. So he's a prophet from the family of prophets. And he makes one dua. Rabbi qad ataytani min al-mulk wa'allamtani min ta'weel al-hadith. He, said, he, he first and foremost acknowledges the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him with. That he has given him authority, he's given him a portion of, of the land to rule. And he's also given him the ability to interpret dreams. وَعَلَّمْتَنِي مِن تَأْوِيلِ الْحَادِيثِ فَاطِرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ O originator of the skies and the earth. أَنْتَ وَلِيِّي فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ You are my protector in the world and in the hereafter. And this is his dua. After all that acknowledgement, after you know, recognizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the position he holds, this is the only dua he makes. Think about it. Normally when I 
or any one of us, you know, we are excelling in terms of materialism, we want more. That's just the, the nature of insan. That if he was to have one valley of gold, he wants to have another valley of gold. If I've got my million dollars, well, that's, that's not enough. I need another million. If I'm part of the million dollar club, I need to ascend to the billion dollar club. And if I finally made it to the billion dollar club, I need, it to, I need to go into the trillion dollar club. If I'm part of the 1%, I need to become part of the, zero, the 0.001%. You know, we're always thinking of excelling when it comes to worldly status and acquisition of material goods. Despite the amount that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, mashallah, he's been blessed with dunya, he's got deen, and he's from the family of prophets, but he has only one dua, and no other dua. Tawaffani muslima wa alhiqni bis salihin. Ya Allah, please make me die as a Muslim. He's a prophet, and what is he asking? Ya Allah, make me die as a Muslim. And make me join, or join me up, Connect me with the righteous people. He's not even terming himself to be righteous. Look at the humbleness inside him. He's saying that, make me become joined and connected with the righteous people. Tawaffani muslima wa alhiqni bis salihin. My dear respected brothers and sisters, this is a request I'm going to make, all of, make to all of us here. Incorporate this in our daily dua, insha'Allah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He protects our Islam, He protects our Iman, especially in this environment where our Iman is challenged every step of our lives. Every step our Iman is being challenged. This is where we need the protection. If the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam are asking for death with Islam, we need to ask the same thing and if not even more. May Allah give us all the ability to understand and practice upon what has been said. Subhanakallahi wa bihamdi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.